for anything in our life, we can either be back on our heels, flat-footed or forward center of mass. Back on our heels, meaning really struggling, flat-footed, meaning and we're doing okay, or forward center of mass, meaning that we, we feel as if we're really tackling things and that we are in control of our environment, or at least to some degree. You know, so I place that imagery in your mind because I'll return to it a little bit later in the question when we get into some of the underlying circuitry and tools. In the meantime, I want to remind everybody what the basis of motivation is. Now, there are many neurochemicals and neural circuits involved in what we call motivation, but a central theme of the neuroscience of motivation is that the neuromodulator dopamine is involved. Now, dopamine does other things besides control motivation. In fact, it controls light adaptation in the retina. Um, that is your eye. It controls a number of different things in terms of movement. It controls all sorts of things, but it is strongly related to the motivation pathways. How do we know that? Well, there are experiments on animals and humans which show that even in the absence of dopamine or in the presence of very low dopamine, I should say, people and animals can still experience pleasure. However, when dopamine levels are too low, people's ability to pursue pleasure or their willingness to pursue pleasure, in particular, their willingness to undergo effort to pursue pleasure or any goal of any kind, not just pleasure, any goal of any kind is strongly regulated by the levels of dopamine. So if dopamine levels are too low, people simply will not put in the effort to obtain or reach a goal. If dopamine levels are adequately high, they will put in that effort. And if dopamine levels go too high, you actually see something that is pathologic, which is that people consider every goal a reasonable goal. This is often seen in the manic phase of a manic bipolar person. So for instance, somebody with manic bipolar who's in the manic episode, dopamine levels are very, very high and they will think every idea is a great idea and they will have tons of energy to do that so much so, so that they're not sleeping. How to keep dopamine levels in a range that allow us to lean into effort, but that we don't expend our ability to stay motivated. And we can really trace that back to a biochemical slash neural circuit statement, which is we really want to control our output of dopamine and the baseline levels of dopamine from which that output is taken. In other words, we wanna think about dopamine as a reservoir or residing in a reservoir. That reservoir can be depleted, so it's exhaustible, it's depletable, but it's renewable as well. And one of the best analogies that I've ever heard an analogy of the baseline levels of dopamine as a wave pool. And I really like this. So if you think about this pool full of dopamine, and here we're just talking about the dopamine that resides in the circuits of the brain that control motivation, but that pool of dopamine, you can imagine is just sitting there, not doing much of anything while you're asleep. In fact, while you're sleeping, you're replenishing those dopamine levels. I'll tell you another tool in a moment to replenish those dopamine levels. But if you were to pursue a goal, really, really go forward center of mass for many, many hours or many, many days in some cases, and pursue a goal or multiple goals, and you're really driven to do a ton, what you're effectively doing is generating waves in that wave pool. And if those waves are too big, well then the waves can't keep repeating themselves. So think of about the wave as the motivation and the depth of the pool as the reservoir of dopamine. And if those waves are too big, too much excitement, too much motivation, too much center of mass for a given period of time, then the water in this wave pool sloshes out of the wave pool, lowering the reservoir. And then there are really three ways that you can replenish that reservoir. And you want to maintain or replenish that reservoir if it's been depleted. How do you do that? Well, first of all, quality sleep. So when I say quality, I mean where you're getting enough slow wave sleep and rapid eye movement sleep. So for some people, six hours, for some people, eight hours. Some people might even need a little bit more or a little bit less. We have episodes, the Perfect Your Sleep episode, the Master Your Sleep episode. We have a toolkit for sleep, all available at zero cost at hubermanlab.com, links, etc. So check those out for getting your sleep right. But sleep is really when you replenish that reservoir of dopamine. So you cannot ignore sleep. I'll come back to this in a moment. The second science-supported tool that's really been shown to replenish dopamine, in particular, dopamine within the pathways that regulate motivation, is a practice I've talked about before on the podcast called non-sleep deep rest, sometimes called yoga nidra, although yoga nidra is a little bit different. There are two studies out of Denmark that have explored 
yoga nidra in the context of dopamine. The first one simply involved having people do a yoga nidra practice. Again, this doesn't involve any movement, but it involves people, potentially you, doing anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, although there are now data showing that as short as 10 minutes of a non-sleep deep rest, aka yoga nidra protocol, leads to dramatic, really dramatic increases in striatal dopamine reserves. So it essentially is replenishing the dopamine reserve pool. This is why I'm such a fan of using NSDR, aka yoga nidra, at least once a day, and especially under times when you're engaging in a lot of high output. And when I say, especially at times when you're engaging in a lot of high output, this is a mistake many people make. They push, 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 push. They're in pursuit of a goal. Then they hit that point where they're exhausted. Then they start doing all the dopamine reserve pool replenishing tools such as yoga nidra or nsdr the real key is to always tap off that or refill that reservoir once a day before it's completely depleted now this gets into some of the biochemistry of dopamine and the relevant circuits but it takes a lot longer to restore the dopamine reservoir think of it still as a wave pool but that reservoir from a place of complete depletion than it does of partial depletion. So there's an asymmetry in the way this is done. So it's not as if, you know, you drink a glass of water, you fill the glass of water at a certain rate and it fills up to a certain level and the rate is constant. Think about it as once the level of dopamine in your reserve is depleted past a certain point, it takes a lot more effort, much more sleep, much more NSDR, things of that sort to replenish that reservoir. Now, oftentimes what people will do when they start feeling less motivation is they will start relying on things like Adderall, Ritalin, some cases illegal substances that uh, can increase dopamine. You know what those are. Please don't uh, ever lean to those. They are extremely uh, dangerous. They really are because of their ability to potently release dopamine. And guess what? deplete that reservoir even further. We've talked about some supplements on the podcast that can replenish dopamine, L-tyrosine in particular. Uh, Macunapurines is actually 99% L-dopa, the precursor to dopamine. I don't necessarily recommend uh, macunapurines. It tends to make people uh, very dopaminergic, drive, 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 motivated, and then crash, again, depleting that pool. Uh, L-tyrosine is a little bit milder, but I really encourage people to lean first on the behavioral tools. Many people think NSDR or yoga nidra are simply meditation with a body scan. That's not true. Meditation is a focus exercise. Okay? Most meditations are focus exercise. NSDR restores energy through the dopamine system and newer data are starting to show that it can actually recover lost sleep so if you're not sleeping enough but to return to nsdr aka yoga nidra as a practice yes it's been shown in laboratory studies in humans by the way to restore dopamine levels there's another study lesser known from that same group that was published in 2011 uh, which is entitled Dopaminergic Stimulation Enhances Confidence and Accuracy in Seeing Rapidly Presented Words. This was a cognitive task. They explored yoga nidra, aka NSDR, in the context of increasing striatal dopamine. They already knew that it did that. So that's great. They confirmed that result. But what they also found is that doing NSDR could restore confidence in cognitive ability and performance in these cognitive tasks. Okay, so this is a really powerful zero cost tool for re-upping or replenishing that dopamine reserve. Okay, so this is something to do every day, especially when you're not feeling depleted. So the question again was about how to make sure that you don't go through these cycles of extreme motivation and then lesser motivation. Well, get your sleep right. I would say 80% or more of the nights of your life. Hopefully the nights that it's not good are for good reasons that you're enjoying yourself, but hey, Life happens, so you know, 100% of the time is just not reasonable to expect of yourself. Do NSDR once a day for either 10 minutes. If you have the time to do 20, 30 minutes, or an hour, you will see even more positive effects. It has been shown in these research studies to replenish dopamine, levels of confidence, cognitive ability, etc., and sense of motivation. And I said there were three tools, and the third tool that really can allow you to keep the dopamine, aka motivation circuitry, tuned up properly is to really start paying attention to peaks in dopamine and be very careful about layering in too many things that can stimulate the dopamine system.